Hey, so before we get into which of the creepy crawlies is the best for your many different Pokemon adventures, I want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Audible. So, just in case you're at all out of the loop, Audible is a service provided by Amazon, which has really set the standard for spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Really blazing a trail for their future, all while being on the top option in the industry. They've got everything over there, from recently released books, to absolute classics, along with memoirs from all your favorite celebrities. Also, if you're into original content like podcasts, well, Audible has you covered there. There are thousands upon thousands of titles available to enjoy, so you're definitely bound to find a ton of stuff to indulge in. Audible's new Plus catalog features all of that great content, including their exclusive words, plus music series. I don't want to just lay out the facts though, I also want to let you guys in on how I like to use Audible. There's a series called The History of Sketch Comedy, narrated by Keegan-Michael Key, that dives deep into, you guessed it, the history of sketch comedy. We get a wonderful piece pinned for us, starting with the humor of the ancient Greeks, and it just goes from there. And it's pretty hilarious and insightful. After hearing all of this, truly you must understand that now is the time to try Audible Plus and open yourself up to a world of audiobooks. Go over to audible.com slash mysticumbrion or text mysticumbrion to 500 and get yourself a free 30-day trial so you can enjoy the great Audible Plus catalog. How's it going everyone? Today, I'm bringing you guys another video and our best types of each game series. Today, we will be breaking down the strongest bug type Pokemon in each of the main series games. And as always, leave what typing you guys want to see me do next in the comments below. Whichever typing gets the most upvotes will be the one that I do next. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and with all that said, let's get started. Starting off rather weak, we have the Kanto series games of Red, Blue, and Yellow, with all rather unimpressive options. Due to just the lack of available bug type Pokemon in these games, as well as just the lack of move pull options for any of the bug types in the region. There really aren't any that are good per se, but if I had to pick the best option in these games, it'd have to be Butterfree. Butterfree, like pretty much all bug types in these games, has a pretty horrendous move pull. However, the fact that Butterfree at least has some fairly okay utility moves, and moves like Stun, Spore, and Sleep Powder, at least gives it some sort of an in-game edge over all our other options. Realistically though, Butterfree winning the best bug type of Gen 1 title here, it's just the equivalent of handing it a participation trophy when you compare it to any other bug types on this list. Luckily, our next games of Gold, Silver, and Crystal actually provide us with a few viable bug types to use on our playthrough. And compared to the gyms you face, these only have an even stronger potential to be used on your playthrough. For this list though, our strongest bug type to use would go to none other than Scizor. To get Scizor, you need to locate the Metal Coat, which can be found on Route 38 or Route 39, but it's only a 2% chance on Magnemite to be a held item, so keep that in mind. When you do find this though, you can find a friend to trade with to evolve Scyther and the Scizor once you caught one from the bug catching contest. Scyther will be a useful defensive check against gyms such as Chuck, Jasmine, Price, and even somewhat Claire. When it comes to the E4, Scizor helps out against most members. But keep in mind, Karen's Houndoom, Lance's Charizard, and Dragonite. When it comes to Kanto, you also match up well against most gym leaders besides Blaine and Blue, as both have coverage. And when taking on Red at the end of the game on Mount Silver, just be wary of his Charizard. A somewhat less viable option is Heracross, if you don't have anyone to trade with however. But overall, the matchups are less favorable without specific TMs to assist you in your coverage. Now, going into Generation 3, we took on Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, where we see our first tie of the video between Shed Ninja and Heracross. Shed Ninja is advantageous, especially in the early game, since you can't actually get Heracross until the seventh gym, and it is able to utilize Wonder Guard early on to help assist it in matchups against most trainers. Shed Ninja also helps out a bit more against gym leaders, such as Pseudopolis, for example. As Wallace and One both have zero moves that affect it. If you're willing to play the long game, Shedinja, while it has a horrible moveset overall, is actually able to stall out a lot of opponents. As for Heracross, while you don't have Heracross for a majority of your playthrough, barring Roxanne and Norman, you don't really miss having it either. In these games, Heracross has access to options such as Rock Tomb and Brick Break now, which make it a far more threatening Pokemon already. We start with the Psychic Twins, Tate and Liza. While Heracross is weak to Psychic, it still also hits the type for great damage. In Ruby and Sapphire, Tate and Liza only have Sorok and Lunatone, which are still both neutral to fighting anyway. Meanwhile in Emerald, they also have Zatu and Claydol, which at the very least Rock Tomb hit Zatu for super effective damage. 
Going on to the E4, Heracross demolishes both Sydney and Glacius teams with ease, as you'll have options such as Brick Break and Megahorn by the time you start off the Elite Four. In Ruby and Sapphire, Heracross will also have the edge versus the champion being Steven, while in Emerald, you at least have a neutral matchup and still be able to apply a lot of pressure. There's no bad option when choosing between these two to be honest, so let me know below which one you'd use on your journey. On to Fire Red and Leaf Green, where we have none other than Scyther as our new reigning champion of Kanto. This is a Fire Red exclusive, however, so make sure to keep that in mind. If you're using Leaf Green, you're still stuck with Butterfree, which hasn't really improved at all besides a few nice coverage options and compound eyes. Bug types still have practically zero use in this gen, barring Erika, which even then, there's zero bug type moves that actually will make Erika's gym any easier for the current time. Scyther, at the very least, will make a few mons on Bruno's team be a bit easier, as well as help versus Blue's team by killing his grass. Otherwise, bug still proves to be an awful type in Kanto. We finally have the Generation 4 games, where Bug is no longer just a physical type, which will lead into hopefully some more variation in our selected Bugs, right? Well, starting off, we have a familiar face, being none other than Heracross. Heracross is still destroying the in-game, however, it's still very difficult to encounter. You need to use the Honey Trees and wait for 8 hours in hopes of at least maybe getting a Heracross, making this a very time-consuming bug to encounter, but a very worthwhile one. Heracross in these games has a far greater level up moveset with Fighting Stab early on at level 19. And while it lacks good bug options until level 55, for Gardenia's gym, you still at least will have Aerial Ice to beat her. The next gyms you match up well against come back to back with Byron and Candace, both of which stand zero chance against Heracross. Bringing Heracross in these gyms should be a very quick in and out, since neither can even really remotely pressure you. Finally, if you get Earthquake from Wayward Cave, you can also have a really strong matchup against Volkner as well. In terms of the E4, your matchups aren't really stellar, besides a couple of Birthus Pokemon and then Lucian. However, Heracross can at least still be helpful with TMs like Earthquake to help make Flint a bit easier, but I would still be very careful. Nothing really changes for Heracross, barring the fact it just does everything easier in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So the next important region to cover is none other than Unova with Black and White. We have another tie in our rankings between two contenders of Scullipede and Crustal. Scullipede is a pretty strong option due to having advantages such as its early ability to find, which will help against gyms such as Berg, who has Levani as his ace, which loses to Rollipede. Scullipede also in terms of advantages it has over Crustal, we can see it has a strong speed stat, which can help it not need to take as many hits as Crustal may need to. While having similar coverage to Crustal in terms of what it needs such as ground and rock options, Scullipede also gets a typing of Bug Poison, which will help you against gym such as Berg, where you wouldn't have the opportunity to even use Crustal since you'd be stuck with Drubble. Crustal may seem like a bit of an oddball at first, until you realize bugs yet again have a pretty awful time against most gyms as gen. Luckily though, Crustal is a good option to handle gyms such as Skyla, which unlike Galvantula, you'll most likely be evolved by this point in the story. Crustal also however, unlike Galvantula, is fairly useful against Byron as well, seeing as his team gets destroyed by any sort of rock options. You can also utilize Crustal against Caitlyn and Grimsley in the E4. And it's even fairly useful against N, seeing as his entire team would lose to x Scissor plus Earthquake, plus any sort of Rock-type move for Archeops. Scalopede fares pretty similarly in all these matchups as well, just misses out on a strong Rock option like Stone Edge for Rock Slide, which while not bad, just hits for less damage overall. Both of these Pokemon will be strong options on your adventure, and I'm interested in hearing your thoughts for these as well. Going into Black and White 2, we have two pretty evenly matched bug types in Heracross and Crustal. But ultimately, I think I had to give the edge here to Heracross by a very close margin. Crustal has to its credit been by far the biggest rival to Heracross so far in terms of viability. However, where Heracross most shines is the fact it's useful earlier on without needing to evolve it. Heracross can be found as early as Lost Lorn Forest, which helps you with beating Clay's team this time around. Most of Clay's Pokemon are weak to fighting, which helps make this matchup a bit easier. While you struggle versus Scala this time around, Crustle actually struggles more against her this time, due to her newly acquired Skarmory. Without Bryson this time, the last two gyms become pretty neutral for bugs, leaving the E4. Nothing really changes here, except your final boss becomes Iris this time, who still has a fairly weak team to Heracross. All you need is good fighting options, and you hit her entire team for neutral or super effective damage, making this another easy match. 
Looking at X and Y, we have Heracross making its next appearance on the list, making it its sixth total appearance here. Heracross is a Pokemon Y exclusive, however, so if you're playing X, you have Crusto at least, which still can be good, just as a bit more depending on TMs, where Heracross gets most of what it needs from stabs in these games. All Heracross really needs for these games is its stabs, and it can actually win against most leaders in these games. You can get Heracross before the third gym, which while it doesn't super effectively beat the leader, Heracross is still very useful, being a resist to two of Karina's Pokemon. By the time you get to Ramos, you should be able to have Surf, which means you can get x Scissor from Azor Bay, making this gym a wash. Lumios' gym has two Pokemon with the Heracross's Fighting Stab, so just watch out for Emolga. Anastar, if you be aware of Sigilith, should be easy, and so should Wolfric. The only gym leader you may struggle with would be Valerie, but even still, you match up so well against every other gym leader, that's not a concern. The E4 has a bit of an issue with Heracross as well. As long as you bring Rock Slide, Megahorn, Close Combat, and Earthquake, you can actually apply pressure with Heracross against every member. As far as Diantha goes, Heracross pretty much loses because of her Hawlucha and Mega Gardevoir, so keep that in mind. This is arguably the strongest generation Heracross has, or any bug type currently mentioned for that matter. Skipping over Oras, since Heracross, like in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, is basically the same matchup wise, only better. We now get into Alola, where we have Rabombi as the best option for your team. While you can make a case for a lot of the bugs in the Alola region, Rabombi, I think, is the most consistent. Rabombi has a very high speed stat and evolves reasonably early at level 25. Even as a Cutifly, you still have good matchups versus trials like Mallows, where you can handle the Totem Lorantis, for example. Or, if you're playing Ultra Moon, you also have the Alolan Raticate or Rattata. Rabombi also is great against Totem Kamo'o, but beware as it does have Flash Cannon, as well as a boost to every stat. Cutifly and Rabombi also punish two of the Kahunas, being Hala and Nanu, neither of which have any good ways around this Pokemon. Rabombi also is your strongest option against opponents such as Lusamine, or Gladion, who at least has a few Pokemon that are hit by your typing, like Weavile and Lucario. As for the Pokemon League, you still harm Hala, who has no resist, but the rest of the E4 punishes you well. The only bug type that gives a run for Rabombi's money in terms of the E4 would be Vikavolt, but it takes too long to evolve early on to be more useful for the overall story. When comparing to Ultra Sun and Moon, while not much changes about bug type viability, you actually can potentially later on get access to Vault Corona, who will help significantly in your later endeavors, such as versus Mulane, or even to an extent versus how with beating a starter, if it's Incineroar or Decidueye. And it even helps out against Crabominable or even Alolan Raichu. Otherwise, you still match up fairly well against opponents like Lusamine or Gladion to an extent. But most bug types don't have any truly phenomenal matchups here, barring Rabombi, who can on its own take down certain bosses like Nanu and Hala. We come to Kanto, where bug types are yet again awful. There is no worse in-game generation for bugs than Kanto, due to every gym litter having a very strong edge over pretty much all bug types. The best bug here would have to be Pinsir or Scyther. This one really just comes down to the version you play, as these are the version exclusive bugs. Pinsir overall has a slight edge due to getting x Scissor earlier on than Scyther. However, both have a few good matchups, and you'll still have this move in time for Sabrina either way, making them both pretty much as valuable here. Besides finally having x Scissor though, neither option really changed at all here. So the edge goes to Pinsir in this gen, but Scyther is still a fairly viable alternative should you be playing Let's Go Eevee. Honorable mentions go out to Beedrill, because while it's still not as impressive, you at least do have an actual poison option this gen, such as Poison Jab, to handle the new fairy typing presented in a couple Pokemon, such as Clefable and Wigglytuff. In this game though, the typing as a whole is few and far between here, unlike in games such as Sword and Shield and X and Y. We finally get into the Gala region, where our final bug type for this region is a returning member to the list being Rabombi. Rabombi has a very strong typing of Bug Fairy, which will be very key when taking on opponents such as Marnie throughout the story, as well as gyms such as B, Pierce, and Raihan. While you can make a case defensively for Araquanid against gyms such as Melanie or even offensively against gyms like Gordy, overall the typing just helps it out more so with staying alive rather than actually getting past Pokemon who would otherwise be a more neutral matchup for it unless you're selecting a water type move. Rabombi is one of the faster Pokemon you can get through the story, which is great because even in more neutral matchups, you can still use attacks like Dazzling Gleam or Bug Buzz and damage a majority of the in-game mons as there are no poison or steel type leaders in this game. And 
The only opponents who specialize in either are Marco Cosmos. Overall, Rabombi makes a lot of matchups more easily handled, such as Marnie and Team Yell's Pokemon, B's G-Max Machamp, and even Raihan's G-Max Duraludon doesn't like taking hits from Rabombi due to its lackluster special defense and neutral type in the fairy. Overall, Rabombi is the clear choice for Sword and Shield. So, that's it for this video. In the bug type listings, we see that Heracross is a clear top contender, with other runner-up options being Monza to Scullipede, Crustle, Rabombi, and many more. Thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If you all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbreon, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.